Tesla Mate, which is comparable to something like Teslify or the Stats app, but probably much more robust. The other nice thing is you can host this yourself at home on an old Mac Mini, or you can host it on a shared server. I'm using Vulture.com. I'll link to it below. I'm paying five bucks a month to self-host this, so I like being in control of my own data. You supply the credentials for your Tesla account so it can pull data right out of the car. I've never had a problem with this keeping the car awake, which I had a problem with Teslify doing when I experimented with it. This trip was a good excuse to kind of dive into some of the data that you can pull out of Teslify. I don't tend to use this during the trip that much, but it's nice to go after the fact and just kind of see what was going on. So we have all these dashboards here, different things you can see. We'll go into a couple of these in a second. Uh, these geofences, you can set these up as you go. And after you hit a charging stop, you can go in, set the geofence, and then edit it later or change the name and it'll ap apply whatever charges. So here was the Shelby Iowa charger. It was 33 cents per kilowatt hour. I went in, added my own name that I wanted to use. You can choose like in Wisconsin, it was per minute or per kilowatt and it'll go back and it'll retro retroactively add all of that uh, cost to each charge. So when you first log in, you'll actually be zoomed into your street level detail. You'll see your, your street level and some of the status of the car, what's going on. So we'll dive into the trip tab. And I've set this trip tab to be the dates of the trip. So I've, here's the overview of the trip that we took. So we went out, went, I call this the northern route on the way back. I went southern route just to see something different. Breaking down the total distance we traveled, uh, miles per hour with the brakes. Uh, I did notice that this net kilowatt is a little different than the car, so I'm not sure how it's calculating. Maybe some charging losses that are calculated in there. I'm not quite sure because the car was showing uh, 200, I think it was 279 watt hours per mile for the entire trip how much we use in kilowatt hours, DC added, AC added for the trip. You'll see these states of where the car was doing, whether it was driving, whether it was online. And down below, we can see the drives. So we can go through all the drives. Or down below, I can see all the charging sessions down here. A little further down on this page, we'll get the battery range and level. So you can see that like kind of most that I went to was that 86% charge. And the lowest we actually got to was 16%. That's the, actually it was 16 in the car, but showing 17 here. That was the night we slept in the car, the rest stop on the way home. Elevation levels. Now you can break these out into their own pages. So Charges here, we'll go to the charges just to see all of these in one page by itself. You can filter this by date, newest to oldest, oldest to newest. And if I hit any of these locations, so we'll do the Genoa, Ohio Service Center. Open that in a new tab. And I've already added this one. So I've got the cost per kilowatt hour. You can see, zoom out on the map see where it is. You can even change it to satellite view if you want to. If you go in, now once this first comes up, this cost will be blank until you add that cost in. So if I go to the cost, open that in a new tab. So it's going to show me the date that I was charging from the car, the kilowatts uh, added, the time I was there charging. I can also see on the right side here how much was added, used, the efficiency temperature, kilowatts added, the start and stop of the state of charge. The one thing I did notice is that what's in the Tesla account doesn't quite match what's in here. So we'll look at one example I had, I pulled out of the um, Tesla account was the Shelby, Iowa account. So the car is showing, I used 37.84 
And then when I look in the Tesla account, it's only showing I'm paying for 37 kilowatt hours. I'm not sure, it doesn't make sense if they're rounding down or they're uh, Tesla not counting charging loss, whereas the car is accounting for charging loss kilowatts. So anyhow, Tesla charged me 37, so it's showing 37.84, and it's showing the cost as $12.49, but in reality, Tesla charged me $12.21. So it's a little bit off, but it's probably pretty good and close enough. If I look at the drives tab, I can break out the drives by themselves from the going from home, every drive that we made, whether it's pulling you know across the parking lot or if it's a big drive. So you know here we did 60 miles uh, from Rapid City Charger to probably the Spearfish Charger. It took us an hour. Open this tab up, see what we see here. So for this drive, we can see that we went 60.21 miles. We used 17.8 kilowatt hours. This was the consumption, 296 kilowatts. Here's the map of where we went from start to finish on that route. So we had charged up Rapid City, went to Spearfish and charged before heading on to Devil's Tower. Over on the left, we've got different power usages during the drive here. You can see the tire pressure during the drive, the elevation changes, the temperature. Here's the elevation summary down below. And then I've got the mileage beginning and start on this leg of that journey. I can also go to a timeline. And this is, again, set to the dates of our trip. And I can, again, filter this from when we left the house to when we, see, we left Actually, at 10.30 at night, I charged a few times at home. We started driving at 10.38. And whether it's a driving, charging, or parking, I can see all the stats combined into one. The geofences, that once you set them, are editable. If the rate changes, so maybe I have my home setting, so currently I'm paying 12 cents a kilowatt. I was paying 11 before it went up a penny, so I've changed that to 12 cents a kilowatt. It won't retroactively go through it unless it's new. So it's just going to, from this point forward, start calculating based on this new rate. We'll go look at the, uh, the Mitchell Supercharger, edit that, and again, per kilowatt or per minute, I can use whatever name I want to. And what I just did is I based it off of, when I went to the charges tab, I just took this name, say Tesla Supercharger Custer, open that in a new tab, just use that name, plotted in the 41 cents per kilowatt hour, and then went retroactively and did the six or seven times we charged there and calculated those all up. So TeslaMate's really a cool program. It's open source. I'm surprised not more people know about it or use it. It's uh, Really nicely done program. It's not that hard to install on your own with a little bit of uh, tech savvy. You should have it up and running maybe in about half an hour to an hour.